motion in space. So let, uh, as usual, let our vector valued position function be r of t is equal to x of t i plus y of t j plus z of t k. Um, and let this represent the path of a particle along a smooth curve in space. So concepts we've seen before in single variable calculus extend to multivariable calculus nicely here, so where the first derivative represents velocity and the second derivative represents acceleration. And note it's common here sometimes for text to leave off the input and write a v of t, a vector function representing the velocity at input t, uh, just simply as vector v, et cetera. So for the first derivative, if you have a position function r, then r primed is going to give us, or dr dt, the derivative of r with respect to t, is going to give us a velocity function vector valued v of t. The direction of motion is going to be given by the unit tangent vector, which before we had defined as r primed, scaled down to unit length by, by a, its own magnitude. Um, we're just changing the notation here. r primed is v of, v of t now. Uh, the speed is the magnitude of velocity, which can be given by the magnitude of the first derivative, uh, magnitude of velocity. And so let's take a look at a graph here. And so here is the velocity vector here. And once this thing load, loads, um, notice that as this, once I click play here, the tangent vector is, tells you about the direction of travel, but uh, as the point or particle travels along this path, um, sometimes it slows down and sometimes it goes faster. And observe the magnitude of the tangent vector, um, or I'm sorry, the, yeah. Yeah, the magnitude of the tangent vector as, uh, uh, as it slows down and speeds up. Sorry, it's going backwards. Let it go backwards here for a second. It's easier to think about once we get forward here. Uh, patience, patience. All right, now it's going forward. Slows down at the crests and the valleys and then accelerates on the, the, the declines and inclines. And so, as you can see, the length of that tangent vector increases as that speed increases. Now the second derivative, of our position function is a of t, representing acceleration. And alternate notations for this, uh, you can have the acceleration be represented by the first derivative of the velocity, which is really the same thing as the second derivative of the position function. So let's take a look at an example. Let r of t represent uh, be the function uh, x component t squared minus 3t, y component 2t minus 4, and z component t plus 2. It's a position function for a particle uh, with t given in seconds and distance measured in feet. So we want to find the velocity, acceleration, and speed as functions of time. So the first thing is to calculate the velocity, which is the first derivative. So the x component derivative of t squared minus 3t gives us uh, 2t minus 3. And in the y component, the derivative of 2t minus 4 gives us just 2. And in the z component, the derivative of t plus 2 gives us just 1. So that gives us our velocity uh, function. And then acceleration, the second derivative of our position function. And so we're taking the derivative of that prior expression, the velocity function there. So derivative of 2t minus 3 is just 2. Derivative of the y and z components as they're both constants are just going to be zero. And now last but not least, speed, oftentimes notated as a scalar function v of t, uh, not bolded because it gives us a actual number, is the magnitude of the vector value function, the velocity. And so we take the square root of the sum of the components squared, and what we get is the square root of 4t squared minus 12t plus 14. And that's a function that spits out the speed at point uh, at time t. So when it comes to the acceleration vector, we can break it down into a couple components here. And this uh, image does a nice job of kind of breaking that down. So the dashed line represents the trajectory of an object that, that's moving, this car, for example. The acceleration vector 
points towards the inside of the turn at all times. So there's an example of what the acceleration vector looks like. Now, we know that we can find the tangent vector and the normal vector to this, uh, the trajectory of this car traveling. Um, I don't know why we've got this. I'm going to change this. I think that should be uh, n. And we're going to call this. Well, that can be velocity because, that, yeah, that's velocity. That's fine. I shouldn't have changed that one. So what you have is you kind of have a normal and a tangent component of this acceleration vector the normal component here and then the tangent component there. With theta defined as the angle between uh, acceleration vector and the velocity vector, we can rewrite and kind of break apart the acceleration vector as such. So let R of t be our position function. Then the acceleration vector can be written as A of t, where A subscript tangent vector, this is a scalar that's just a number because it's a non-bolded a uh, times the tangent vector the unit tangent vector um, plus a subscript n which is a number again because it's uh, a scalar value scaling the unit normal vector so that little a sub t is actually called the tangential component of acceleration and that little a uh, subscript bold n is the normal component of acceleration. So the tangential component of acceleration is given by the dot product of the acceleration vector with the unit tangent vector, which can be simplified as the derivative with respect to t of the magnitude of the velocity vector. And the normal component of acceleration uh, can be given as a lot of different formulas here, but the curvature times the, the magnitude of the velocity squared, uh, or it's equal to the acceleration dotted with the normal vector, or it's the square root of the acceleration vector magnitude squared minus the tangential component of acceleration squared, or it can be the cross product of the acceleration vector with the velocity vector divided by uh, the magnitude of that cross product, rather, divided by the magnitude of the velocity vector. So let's continue the example from the last section. Um, we had that our position function was x component 3 cosine t, y component 3 sine of t, and z component 4t. We know because we calculated the unit tangent and unit normal vectors, they're listed below. And so now, from here, let's use this information to calculate the tangential and normal components of acceleration. So the tangential component of acceleration is the dot product of the acceleration vector dotted with the unit tangent vector. And so the since we know the dot product is, all right, wait a minute, sorry. The acceleration vector we calculated earlier, now we have negative three cosine of t, uh, negative three sine of t, zero, dotted with the unit tangent, which we can see above is that negative three fifths sine of t, et cetera. When you take that dot product, you get negative nine fifths cosine t sine of t minus nine fifths cosine t sine of t plus zero equals zero. And so we get zero for the tangential component of acceleration. The normal component of acceleration is given by the dot product of the acceleration vector and the normal, the unit normal vector. So again, the acceleration vector is dotted with the normal vector. When you dot product those, negative three cosine of t times negative cosine of t gives us three cosine squared of t, negative three, and then for the y components, negative three sine t times sine of t uh, gives us, what have I left off here? I messed up a minus here somewhere. Uh, I made a mistake and I can't see it at the moment, but uh, let's not find it. Let's assume that that's correct and you get the dot product of three. So now putting all of this together, uh, we get that acceleration can be written as the tangential component of acceleration times the unit tangent vector plus the normal component of acceleration times the unit normal vector and the tangential component was zero. So zero times the unit tangent and the normal component was three, so three times normal, uh, which we can see we can true. The particle moving on this path will be moving at a constant speed, which we should probably verify. Uh, so as you're moving at a constant speed, 
any acceleration should come as a change of direction. And that's it for motion in space.